Hello again, everyone. Uh, my name is The Steel Phantom, and this is a quick update to a Time Warped Badges video that I made a few years ago. Uh, but this time, a little more friendly to first-timers who have never seen it or don't know where to get started, and uh, also from a Horde perspective instead of Alliance like the last one. Uh, this walkthrough video's purpose is to show you how to maximize the amount of Time Warped Badges that you can obtain from uh, a given Time Walking weekly event. Uh, Time walking dungeons obviously still have their purpose. Like, you know, the first, you know, the first one you do gets you 500 badges, or maybe you need the uh, the normal piece of raid gear, um, or you need, you know, you just need regular gear on an alt. Um, that's fine. But if if your only goal is badges, just stop doing time warp dungeon, time walking dungeons. Do this instead. Uh, this method will get you somewhere between 80 and 160 badges in just six minutes um, versus spending 10 or 15 minutes in a dungeon for a measly five per boss. Um, that being said, if you've never done this before, or you're a first timer, uh, it will take about an hour of work um, to, to get you started. You're gonna have to max out Chromie's rep and then work down through her talent tree um, before you're really getting the 80 to 160. But even before even before that, you'll still get you'll still get forty to eighty. It'll I mean it, it still dwarfs doing dungeons. So uh, that being said, um, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll, I'll show you where I am. You're gonna want even though this event came out in Legion, you're gonna want to come up here to Northrend and come to Dragonplight and go to Wormrest Temple. You're gonna come up to the top of it where the dragon aspects are, and you're gonna find Chromie. And you, First timers, when you talk to her, you're gonna have a quest called "The Day That Chromie Dies." Uh, now you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna look at a, look up that quest on Wowhead and uh, you know read the comments, find you know find you know how to how to do it, how to go through it the first time, and you know unlock her, you know unlock all of her talent trees, and you know get the achievement if if you want it, all that stuff. But to maximize her rep from you know nothing to to max, it'll only take you an hour. Like literally at, at the most, I did it in 61 minutes on an alt before starting this video, just to see how fast it would be. Um, <clears throat> uh, the rest of it, uh, you'll just you'll just start the video for everyone else or new timer or first timers. Start the video, pop into her scenario. She's gonna take you to the exact same place, just in the future. The whole goal is you're trying to like you know prevent her from being assassinated in the future. She's gonna freeze time as soon as you get here, and that's convenient because I'm gonna show you a few things. So what we're gonna do here in this video is we're gonna go from we're gonna go from dragon shrine to dragon shrine, and we're gonna do particular things at each one. Uh, each dragon shrine, including Wormrest Temple itself here, um, has a centaur, and then each of the dragon shrines also has a chest that can spawn in one of two locations and a mini boss the chests centaurs and mini bosses all drop sands of time it's an item uh, inside the sands of time can be time warped badges that's the whole reason we're here so we're going to go from each one we're going to kill a centaur we're going to loot a chest and uh, kill a boss with the exception of one chest that i'll talk about later um, that said you can talk to Chromie, and I'll show you her talents and my build that I use. So like I said, you can max her rep out in about an hour, and then you'll have to work through her talents. The first two talents happen basically instantly. It takes no time to research. I take the first one because it you know, lets you move around in here a lot faster. The second one doesn't matter, but I prefer the right one. Or the second tier doesn't matter. I prefer the right one. Uh, the third tier... I like the leftmost one because she takes less damage and still you move even faster. Um, I like I like the left one in the fourth tier because it makes treasures a lot easier to see. There's uh, there's one that's that's annoying to see. It's in the water. The fifth one is your bread and butter. Uh, unfortunately for first timers, your these three the the third tier, the fourth tier, and the fifth tier they each take one day to research and unlock. So you'll have to take a day to unlock this one, and then one more day to unlock this one. But it's just a, 
you know, click it and then come back in 24 hours kind of thing. But the fifth one is your bread and butter for everyone, first timers and, you know, people here um, that even aren't because it doubles the amount of sands of time you get. And as I said earlier, the time walking badges are inside the sands of time. So you, you, you basically have to have this in order to get that 80 to 160 I mentioned. Otherwise, you're looking at half of each of those numbers, so 40 to, 40 to 80. That being said, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll, uh, I'll start a stopwatch here in the top right to show you really just how fast this is. I'll apply my poisons. And the very first thing we're going to do from one of these dragon aspects, we're going to pick up a quest. And then we're going to fly behind Caligos and straight down. Like I said, at Warmrest Temple, there is, there is a centaur. We're going to kill this centaur and then go on to the first of the four dragon shrines. <clears throat> we're going to make our way to the first dragon shrine in the bottom right and then it's going to be all northwest from there we'll just go from down here and we'll just move our way up them so remember i said at each at each shrine is a centaur a chest and a mini boss the mini boss for this shrine is right here behind this claw, or uh, in front of this claw. I like to kill that bird because Chromia will always aggro it and it'll get annoying. And then I kill the mini boss and I look for the chest. The first chest can be right here in the water, right behind him. It's not, so the second location it can be is right here behind this tree. And then we haven't got the centaur yet for this location. So we're gonna grab him on the way to the purple shrine. On the way to the purple shrine, I like to look for the first chest location first. It's in the bottom right corner, right here, and it happens to be here. You kill the mobs guarding it, grab the chest, and then go to the boss location. There's three purple discs or uh, blue discs, the boss is on this one. And the other location the chest could be is on that one over there, where, where you see my mouse circling in the top right. So I kill the boss, turn around, and get the centaur, which pats on the uh, patrols the north side of this purple shrine. And then we're gonna head again, we're just, we're moving our way northwest. We're going to head northwest to the next shrine, which is the big tree one. <clears throat> First timers to this, at each shrine, you're gonna, you are gonna—you won't be able to go to the boss straight away. You'll have to do some stuff at the shrine to reveal the boss's location. But then every time thereafter, you'll come to the shrine and Chromie will just be like, Hey, we, we know that the boss is here. Let's just go straight to the boss. And that's what I'm doing. So the first location at this shrine is at this claw for the chest by the tree, the entrance to the tree is to the right. The other place the chest could be is in the northwest corner, just to the right of that of that dragon spine. It could be right there. We'll go inside the tree and we'll kill the lich. And then we'll move on. Stuck in combat for a second. There we go. The centaur for this shrine patrols up and down on the right side of it, or the east side. And we're going to continue northwest towards this tree line. And the centaur is on this, uh, this north-south section of road. Now for this shrine, it's important to note that we're not going to get the chest here because it's inside that cave and you'd have to walk all the way in, find the chest in the one or two locations, and then walk all the way out. It just takes too much time. So we're just going to kill the boss right outside the cave, get out of combat, 
and then rather rather than flying all the way back to Dragon Blight, or uh, Wormrest Temple rather, we're just going to fly straight up uh, to a height that, you know, the fall damage will kill ourselves. And we'll respawn right at Wormrest Temple. And we can turn in the quest for doing one of the Dragon Shrines that we were already to do anyway. And then we're going to pop in here to Anderhall. Uh, we don't you can do the, the other shrines if you want, but I find that they take way too long for the reward. But Anderhall is very, very fast. So we're going to jump into Anderhall. And we're just going to go straight out of where we enter. And now again, I said this was from the Horde perspective. So the Horde are attacking the Alliance in this situation. The Alliance area is back there behind where we come out. Uh, you can watch the other video if you want the Alliance perspective. Um, but we're going to come straight out. And both both the Alliance and the Horde areas have one chest each. So we're going to check the chests uh, for here. The first one that could spawn would be right here in front of this windmill. It's not there, so we're going to check the other locations. It happens to be behind this torrent. This, this go around. The other location it could be is over in this massive building, right there in the entrance of it, behind Hexweaver. So we've got the Horde chest. Let's go to the Alliance chest. Well, we're going to go through the entire Alliance route, and I'll show you the chest as we get to it. So we're going to kill uh, this mage, this mage woman. And the first location that the chest could be is right here behind her. It's not here, so it's going to be in one of the other two locations. I killed that guy because Chromie was going to aggro him anyway. And then we're going to kill Potion Master Donovan and the whatever else aggros. Remember, this was a Legion event, so Chromie's pretty low. She's only level 47, so she's going to aggro everything. And then we're going to check this road right here for this Worgen. And we're going to kill him. In that little house right there, that blue blue roofed alliance house, could be the other location for the chest. It's not there, which means it's going to be up here. In this final area, there's a dwarf priest in that large house, and a gnome engineer guy in that little house. The other chest is behind the dwarf priest, which you can see right there. We'll loot the chest, and we'll loot him. And then we'll kill the gnome, and we'll be done with the entire run. We'll back up here so Chromie doesn't aggro that horse uh, commander guy. And we'll, uh, you know, stop the stopwatch. And you can see it's at seven and a half minutes. But that's, you know, I said six minutes, but I showed you every single possible spawn location for everything. Once you know how to check them, uh, it'll, it'll obviously be a lot shorter. And you can see that we've got 68 sands of time here, and we're just going to open every single one of them now. And we'll see how many uh, how many time more badges we have. I'll actually open my window. I'm at 8.15. I haven't gotten any yet, as you can see in my chat log. Uh, it might be blurry because of the resolution of my monitor. Uh, but I haven't gotten any yet. But we're going to open every single one of those sands of time. And we'll see how many badges we have afterwards. Remember, we started at, I want to say it was 8.15, because I just bought them out uh, about an hour ago. So we're going to open, continue opening every one of these. It takes a few seconds of just continual, you know, continually clicking. You just, you know, spam, spam your buttons. All right, there we go. Let's see what we're we're all out. So we're now at 995. Wow, that's that's a really good run. Holy, let's count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Holy shit! That sorry, my language. Uh, that's that's a record for me. That's 180. Uh, this whole time, I've always just done. <laughs> I've always just done. Uh, you know 
somewhere between 80 and 160 is is what I've gotten. I got 180 just now. That's actually that's unheard of for me. Uh, don't watch this video and expect you're going to get 180. Stick to you know at least 80, you know 100 ish average. But wow, because I was at 815, now I'm at 995 as you can see. Um, and that's the uh, that's the entire run. Um, let me know if you have any uh, questions or concerns or comments or whatever. Um, I'm not a big YouTuber, but if you if you like to you know subscribe and stuff, go go for it. This is really just a guide for my friends, and you know maybe I'll post it on Reddit or something like the last one. It happens to come up. I still get comments on the previous one with the uh, you know the Alliance perspective. It's been years, so um, we'll see. Um, Hope you guys have a good one. It's again, it's a six minute run, 80 to 160 badges. Don't, you know, don't bother doing dungeons anymore. Do this. Have a good one. Later.